15. Now what are you? 5'6". Um, five, six. A 5'6 five, six size. Yes. Not 5'6 tall. No. no. <laughs> Linda, you, you told us you've been tormented for nightmares over what happened to you back in high school. In fact, the reason you came here today was you wanted some kind of closure. You wanted to come face to face with a high school friend named Billy. Yes. Okay. Who you say uh, took you out on what was the date from hell. Uh, Billy is waiting outside of our studio, and he has no idea who wants to see him, and he cannot hear what we are talking about. So before we begin about that terrible night, why was high school so painful for you? Um, I had people take my lunch and throw it in the garbage can that they scraped the trays off into, and the boys would take things from me and toss it back and forth and not give it to me. And Like I was going to say, that one outfit I was wearing was my open wide for chunky commercial outfit. Um, a lot of times I got clothes for Christmas. I got this green poor boy sweater which was snug and I wore it to school and um, I was called a pregnant hippo in it and so didn't wear it again. And um, Boy kids can be cruel, can't they? Yeah, very, very cruel. You told us that while most of the kids were mean to you, there was one boy who stood apart and yes. you thought he was fabulous because he respected you no matter what your weight was. And you had a crush on him, right? Yes, I did. And your sister knew about the crush. Yes, she did. Okay, you finally got a chance to go out with this young man, Billy. Mm -hmm. And you say it became a night you'll never forget. Tell me what happened. I had had a crush on him since junior high. And he was a young man who he was very popular and he was a jock. He's the jock and popular. Yes. You're the chubby girl with right. the great big breasts and the stomach right. as big as your breasts. And so. I put him up on a pedestal and thought that of all the guys there at the school that he was the best looking. And he's the one that I dreamed about going on that wonderful date with. And it got to be getting toward oh, the middle of my senior year. And I finally, and I t had mentioned to my sister, you know, finally, I never told her before that, but I told her that I had a crush on him. And um, I thought, oh, well, that might be a mistake, you know. But she um, set up a date with him. And it was, he was in basketball. For you. Yes, for, for me. And it was the last game of the basketball season. And I, first I thought she was kidding. I thought, no, this isn't going to happen, you know. He's going to back out. Well, I went to the basketball game, which I didn't normally do. And I thought, well, he's just going to walk out and leave me sitting here. And he came up at the end of the basketball game and he said, well, are you ready to go? And I thought, well, I can't believe this is really happening, you know. And I can't remember exactly what happened, but we ended up parking and under the guise of we're going to. You look adorable. Renee is 33 years old, and remember, all of this is relative. She weighed 283 pounds, and she is now down to 193. From a size 26 to a size 12. I know you're here for a very serious reason, and that's to see your mother Marie, for the first time in four years. Um, and you've also told us that you've spent a lifetime feeling upset and angry, and it was about the weight. I never, I never felt like my mother knew what it was like to be fat. Why? Because she's thin. She's tall and slender. She's tall and slender. And when I was teased by my siblings, I never felt like she you know, that she took it seriously. In fact, I took a trip home, let's say, four years ago. She lives in Louisiana, I live in San Diego, and I had a brother that teased me. And I went and told her, and here I am, this 30-year-old woman, and she kind of, instead of, you know, doing something about it, she kind of laughed. She, and she's seen nothing wrong with it because she's never been fat before, you know, but it hurts. Why have you not seen her in four years? The desire wasn't really there. We're, we have not been that close in the past. How do you feel about not being close to your mom? Like I missed out on having a mom. Why don't you go backstage and we're going to bring her out, okay? 
Okay, thanks, Sally. Okay, you're welcome. of course that you are here to see your daughter Renee yes, yes, and you yes. haven't seen her in four years right. and you told us that it's only recently that you learned how angry she was at one point in her life uh, because of you is that well, correct it was because of a weight I yes, just because found out of her, that weight, her right. weight really bothered her that is correct I didn't know that while she was growing up Marie I know it's been four years since you've seen her uh, I I think that it was worth yes. the wait. Yes. It's what? Yes, when do I see her? Okay. <laughs> she Renee, her? come on out now and show your mother your good God. <laughs> wow. Oh. You do not look like the same person. My goodness. Now wait, a 28 to a 1? 28 to a 1. How much weight did you lose? 176 pounds. Wow. <laughs> This is something that is very nice. Leanne is here to surprise a woman named Karen. She hasn't seen Karen in five years. Leanne says if it weren't for Karen, she would not be alive today. Karen is waiting in a secluded area and has no idea who wants to see her or why. We're going to meet her soon. Leanne, you said you spent most of your life using food as a way to hide from a painful life. That was a very big woman in that picture. What was going on? You had a very bad home life, didn't you? Um, I had a rough childhood, didn't get along with my mom. Um, I've always been overweight. I went through school being called fat pig, fat bitch, fat ass, um, barnyard moo, being snorted at. Um, in sixth grade, I had some kids give me, they told me it was Mexican chocolate, and after I ate it, they told me it was x lax and I needed to lose weight. Um, went through high school, same thing. Kids are mean, kids are cruel. Boy, are they and, ever. And people don't, when you're overweight, people don't look at you as a person. They, you're not a person, they don't, it's like you don't exist. They figure you're fat, so you're totally out of worthless, control. out of control. And some girlfriends talked me into going out. We went to um, a club on the Navy base in San Diego. And it was the same, same thing being mood at. Um, these guys were daring each other to hit on me, you know, as a joke. It was a very cruel joke. Um, and uh, my husband rescued me. That's, that was how we met. Um, he just he walked up to, to me when they were there and he said, she's dancing with me now. And that was the first weekend of May. He proposed the 4th of July. We got married the 22nd of July and it's been eight years this July. Great. I think that's neat. They were making fun of you, and he said, no, she's going to dance with me. And you were a size 28. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about your uh, friend. Oh, Karen. Um, we met living in San Diego in military housing, and she, guys, <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. It's all right. This was a special, this was a new neighbor on the naval base. Um, and she became my self-esteem. Okay, you said this woman saved your life. Why don't you go backstage and we're going to bring her out, okay? Okay. Our producers told me that we called and told you someone from your past wants to see you again, and you were dumbfounded. I am. I have no idea. I've looked through books and my photo albums, and I have. And you. <laughs> Wait 
a minute. What we just saw here, this was not a terribly insecure, oh my goodness, type of girl. Oh, yes, it was. Oh, my yes, dear. Was, have but... you changed? And that's not just the weight. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have that kind of confidence, this is national television. How much weight have you lost? <laughs> from that picture, from high school to you, how much weight? <laughs> Um, 100 pounds. 100 pounds. Now, the truth is that Michelle didn't just come here to have the kids at home eat their heart out. Uh, she had bigger things in mind. There is a young man named John waiting anxiously in a secluded area. And he has no idea that he is about to see her again. Michelle says that John was the only boy in high school that looked beyond the appearance and liked her for who she was, 100 pounds more of her. Now, years later, she uh, is hoping to rekindle a romance and hope he likes what he sees. He's going to be out here in a few minutes. But you said this young man paid attention to you when you were 100 pounds more? Well, I was at the time I was 180. I mean, he never he didn't see me like 100 pounds overweight. He saw okay. me like 70 pounds overweight. Right. He was with me then. And, and he was with you and things were going along well and you bolted. I left. Why did you bolt? Because I wasn't used to that kind of attention. I was scared. It scared me half to death. I mean, my childhood was constant put downs, constant name calling and I believed it. I believed that, you know, that's who I was. I was this horrible whale, loser, never going to make anything of myself. And it just ruined you, your self-esteem. So you thought you were not worth anything. You had no self-esteem. A guy yeah. comes on to you and you think he's going to make a joke. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's not it's true. a trick. It's right. not true. Right. He's being put up to exactly. it. So you send him on his way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Dummy. Did you regret that? Yeah. <laughs> so why wouldn't you bolt again? Because I'm more secure with myself now. I feel good about myself. I'm actually, I've, I've, I had a job out of high school when I was younger because of the teasing was just so horrendous. And it was just horrible. You don't, you don't know. I wanted to come on the show because I wanted people to know that it affects you still to this day. I mean, I will always see myself as a fat person. It will never, ever ch leave me. He has not heard what we've said. Is that right, Kevin? Okay. Sure. Go ahead. You go backstage. We'll bring John up. Come on backstage. Come on. Welcome. 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 We, um, You know you're here to see somebody from the past. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea who this could be? Um, I'm not sure. Our show. She spends her day focusing on women's appearances. Many of you recognize Cynthia from our makeover shows, and this time we decided to make over Cynthia. Now, she's naturally tall and she's naturally thin, and we made her into a 300-pound woman. We uh, put her in a fat suit, had her face transformed by special effects makeup artist Jane Chu, and we followed her with a hidden camera, and we captured people's reactions to her on videotape. So wait till you see how she was treated. Take a look at this. I start out each day at the Sally Show off and running, planning out Sally's outfits and talking to fashion designers. And even though fashion comes in different shapes and sizes, many women in this business have absolutely no idea what it's like to be overweight, to struggle into their clothes, desperate to look beautiful in a size for a world. So I decided to find out firsthand what it was like to be overweight. I put on a fat suit for a day, which literally doubled my weight, so I became 300 pounds. I had pads put everywhere, on my butt, on my stomach. That pushes out your stomach. And of course, bigger breath. More. I was already starting to feel uncomfortable. No, don't lean forward. Next came my size 26 pantsuit. We're under the right breast. 
Now that my body was bigger, my face needed to match. I was handed some gauze to stuff into my cheeks. One on each side, as far back and down as you can put it. And jowls were added on my face with makeup. I was ready to face the world twice the size I normally was. First of all, Haley in a cab was harder than I thought. They all went by me, and when one finally stopped, it took forever to get in. And just walking down the street was difficult. I was so used to walking fast that it took a long time to adjust to moving so slowly. I was already exhausted, and my day had just begun. The worst part was trying to get into the subway. The stairs were so steep, I was afraid I'd fall. And then, when I had to go through the turnstile, I felt all eyes on me. There was only one seat available on the train, next to a petite blonde. But there was no room for me. I tried to sit... What is the confession? I stole a size 26. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm so depressed, Cynthia, after hearing what, what, you, what you went through yesterday in New York City. Right. I had a much better time than you did, I have to say. Good. <laughs> Why did she have such a hard time only pretending to be fat and you had a good time? That's part of it, I'm sure, is that she was pretending. And she knows what it's like to look like this. Gee, Sally, I'd like to pretend to be you for a day, Cynthia. Aww. Aww. I'm going to pretend tomorrow to be a size 12. That would be... Wouldn't it be great if we could just go like yeah, that and do, you could... It would. Everybody would look the same, though. And my message is, how boring would that be? We're not all the same. And the message of my book, what I say all the time, and I do a lot of public speaking, is that you're entitled to be happy, no matter what you weigh. And you have to separate those two things. You wait from your happiness. You can't wait till you get thin... To have a life. To have a life. We are our own worst enemies. We let it get in the way of our life. Mostly, it's in our heads.